Okay, testing the new MFT top for accuracy. You guys asked for it, so let's jump in and do it. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video we're going to do a accuracy test on my new MFT table. Some of you guys were asking me in the comments, can I do a test to show how accurate it is? So let's do that now and I'm quite curious to find out myself. So I'm going to use a four cut method, sometimes referred to as the five cut method, but if you start with a perfectly straight side, then you only need to do four cuts. The first cut on the five cut method is getting your perfect straight side, but I already know I have a perfect cut on one of my sides, so it's going to be four cuts. Nice and easy, I'll explain it all as we go. I've also made a couple of little um, changes to the top where additions to the top which I'll show you now because I ran into some issues using my Bosch track salt with the Parf dogs which is a little bit annoying but you know you can get around it so let's jump in I'll show you just the two holes I've added and I'll show you the little issue that you will have with the Bosch track salt and these Parf dogs let's do it Okay, so I have my track set up in the middle of the table. This is where I'm going to do most of my cutting. It's where it feels most comfortable to use this table. So I'm probably going to route in a sacrificial piece in between these two holes here, and that'll be a removable piece that I can cut into. Now I've cut a couple of cuts into my top already, but like I said, I'll be routing in a sacrificial piece already, so that doesn't matter. Now, what I did add was an extra hole past the end of my grid. So I have one here for this dog and one here for this dog. That allows me to use the Bosch track saw. So slide this under for now. So if I put my track saw on, the Bosch saw actually overhangs the edge of the track. Unlike the Fest tool, you have like, I think like 15 mil or so past the Fest tool. So you can see you hit your dogs with the track saw, which is kind of annoying, especially if you're setting up to cut uh, short pieces, the track saw gets caught between the dogs. Now there is dogs available with um, T-track tops on them that'll go underneath this track, so I'll have to get them. But for cutting larger pieces like this, I've extended my, um, say it for me, I've extended my grid just so my track saw can run off the piece that I'm cutting and I don't hit my dogs, so it allows me to cut the piece. Now, I'll be setting this piece up against these dogs here. That gives me a nice straight edge and my track should be exactly 90 degrees to that. So let's get on now and do the four cuts. Okay guys, so here's our board. We're gonna do our four cut test. Now I've marked the sides one, two, three, and four. Like I say, sometimes it's called a five cut test. That's just because your first cut is to get a perfect straight side. I already have perfect straight side, so I don't need to do that. So we're gonna put side number one against the fence or against my dogs here and run my track down the side. We'll do a cut, then we move to number two, repeat that and repeat that and repeat that on number four. That means we're amplifying any discrepancy four times and when we do our final cut, we'll measure this piece and I'll show you the formula and the calculations. We'll be measuring um, into radians, not minutes of angle, so we'll be using metric and we'll get an output in degrees and we'll see how many degrees we are off. Hopefully well under zero point something something degrees we should be off by the time we get into this, if it's anyway good. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we can check corner to corner to make sure that our final piece is actually square and that should be a good enough test. Let's do it. So first up, I'm gonna put side number one against the fence. Okay guys, side number one is against our dogs, which means it should be exactly 90 degrees to our track. Our track is set against these two dogs, so we should be good to go. Now I've just clamped it as well, to just to try and be as accurate as I possibly can. I know technically you're testing the entire system, so I'm testing how good my saw is, I'm testing how straight my track is, and testing how square my MFT table is, but we'll just say we're testing the MFT table for the sake of this video. Now I am, in the future, I think I'm gonna get the UJK fence there's a fence that comes to fit with this table and uh, yeah it's a it will be a lot easier to have a nice straight edge up there rather than using the dogs i reckon but uh, i have a clamp on it just to make sure we're held in place so let's perform our first cut a bit of noise here now what i'll do is i'll do the four cuts i'll kind of fast forward the video um, so you guys can see me doing the four cuts but you're not bored to tears so let's do it
Okay, so we're on to our fourth and final cut. Now I'm gonna cut this one a little bit wider. The first ones you can just take a small bit off because all you're doing is creating an edge to go against either your fence or your dogs. And uh, like I say, you're compounding the, the error four times by doing this. So the next one now we can cut a bit wider because we're gonna measure this one. So let's do that. Okay, so there's our final piece. This is the one we're gonna measure. So let me get you in for a closer look and we'll do the measurements and the calculation. Okay guys, now that we have our piece cut, what we wanna do is measure both ends of this. So let me just zero this. It's not a very good calipers, but it'll do for this test. So let's see, 39.22, we'll call that. So just make note of that. 39.22. Okay. And then flip it around and measure this end. That is 39 or 38.96. Okay, so 38.96. Now we want to subtract that and measure the length of this guy. So let's just measure the length of this guy first and then we can do our calculation. Okay, it's so measuring the full end of our piece then. I don't know if this comes out on camera, but hopefully you can see it. So it is 699 millimeters. So we're just under 700 mil, so 699. So we'll take note of that. Okay guys, so here's what the formula we're gonna use. So we measured our piece and we measured each end of it. So we've got 39.22 millimeters and 38.96 millimeters. So we subtract one from the other and that leaves us with 0.26 millimeters. So that's how much we are out from the full length of that piece once we made our four cuts. Now we're going to be using, uh, like I say, radians. So to convert a radian into degrees, it's 180 degrees over pi, which gives us 57.26. So what we want to do now is take 0.26 over 699, that's the length of our piece, times four, which is our four angles, and see what that is. So let's do that on the calculator. So we have 699 by four, which is, two seven nine six and we'll divide that into 0.26 so let's do that 0.26 divided by two seven nine six and that equals point zero 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 nine two Nine, nine. Now that's radians, we want to convert that into degrees. So to convert it into degrees, you multiply it by 180 over pi, that equals 57.296. So we want to multiply that by 57.296. And I'm going to do that on the calculator because I'm not that good at maths. Point one, two, three, four, nine, eight, nine, 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 by 57, 57 point two nine six, and that equals point zero zero five three two seven nine five five degrees out. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's like, you know, a very, very small margin of error and we can call that practically square. So that's how much we're out after our four cut test. So essentially we tested the entire system. They are the track saw, the track and the MFT table. Um, but that's how far we're out, that's how much we're out. That's pretty good guys. I'd be pretty happy with that result. Right guys, there we go. That's a good check of the system and a good check that the table is square and 0 0.0053 degrees out is pretty good after doing the four cut test in my book. It's hard to get much more accurate than that. You probably could if you really, really tried, but uh, that's square as square can be in my book and it's perfectly square for woodworking and everything I need to do. So now, next thing I wanna do is build a fence. So as a little bit of a bonus, I'm gonna build a fence and see if I can get um, a good accurate four test cut from that. So I'm finding it a little bit, um, it's a little bit awkward cutting smaller pieces against the dogs because they can kind of rock on the dogs I find and a nice good long straight edge to put your piece against would be a lot easier. Now UJK do make them, you can buy um, fences that go straight onto this MFT table but uh, I want to see if I can make my own and then repeat the five cut test and see how accurate I can be by making my own. So let's do that now and see what we end up with. 
Okay guys, so now that I know the table is actually accurate and my setup is good, what I want to do now is build a fence because like I said, I've had a bit of issues um, using smaller materials against the dogs. They tend to kind of rock a bit on the dogs and you kind of have to hold them in place and clamp things to the table. I want to be nice, quick, accurate cut. So I want a nice straight edge for my material to go against. So I've set myself up here with a bit of MDF. I'm going to use this as a test piece to see if this concept works. I have a bit of 4 2 underneath that I can drill down into without drilling into my table. And uh, I'm going to use the power guide system again. So I'm going to drill a series of offset holes. I know this piece is perfectly square and the two edges are perfectly parallel so we won't take that for granted but I've measured into the edge of my ruler 20 millimeters so my holes will be slightly offset and just using the power guide system again I'm going to drill out a series of holes that will match my table and then I will use this on the table with the holes in place and run the track saw up it to make sure that this edge runs perfectly parallel to the holes that I put in this and then we should be able to use it for a fence. We'll do a four cut test again and see if our fence is as accurate as using our dogs. So let's get on this. Now I won't go too in depth into this because you guys will have seen me do it already but it's just using the power guide system. So I'm going to crack on and drill out all these holes exactly as I did before and when that's done We'll cut it on the table and uh, we'll test it out. Right guys, I have all my holes drilled out and I just used the chamfer tool on both sides because I plan on putting this down on top of my dogs and dogs down through this if I need to. So chamfered both sides so the dogs will sit in nice and flush. Now the old holes are offset like I told you and I'll show you that now what I'm going to do. So that's going to slip in underneath my track and I'm going to put my dogs down through both of these. So get the larger dogs. One here. Put that guy down and get the other large dog. And those holes should line up there perfectly. Lovely stuff. So that should hold everything in place. I can even use some extra dogs because I have some spare. Just to really make sure that there's no flex and no movement in this. Use the larger side down. So that's well held now. There's four dogs in that. So now what I'm going to do is run my cut up this with my track saw. My track is against these dogs. So in theory, these dog holes are perfectly parallel. So that should give me a perfectly straight edge in relation to these dogs that are in here. And that's what's going to be holding my fence in place. So that should give me a perfectly straight fence. And then we'll repeat our four cut test to prove that our fence works. So let's get on it. Right guys, there's our fence all made up. Now we have arrows on it just to donate which side we um, ran the track saw on. So that's going to be our face side of our fence. So that's our side that's exactly square. So that's the side we want to use. So let's get this in place. Now we can use this as a sacrificial fence too. We can cut straight through this. There's no problems whatsoever. So uh, let's get on it and do that. So we're going to line everything up. And uh, let's just get a dog in here. Put in one of the big ones straight down through the hole. Hold that in place, one there and one there. Now that should be a perfectly held in place fence. Now you can see how accurate this system is, how quick it is to build a fence. Now let's see if we are actually accurate because all the holes are perfect and they line up perfectly. So let's get this and do our four cut test again. So we'll start with number one again against our fence, run a cut in it and so on and so forth. And let's see how we go. Right, so we're going on our four cut test. Now straight away you can feel how much nicer it is to run up against a straight flat fence. A lot more um, material against material. Uh, it's a lot more grippy and it's easier to keep pressure on this end and keep it nice and flat against everything. It's not rocking on the dogs. So uh, it should be nice to be able to cut uh, smaller pieces against that fence. Now let's see how accurate the fence is. That's the test and the proof is in the pudding as they say. So let's try this out.
Okay guys, here we go. So let's measure this. Zero this again. Zero. So this end is 46.17 millimeters. Let's just make a note of that. 46.17. And our other end is 46.71 millimeters. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera, can you? 47.7877. Okay, we'll call that 46.77. So I'm gonna take one from the other, so 46.77, and that leaves us with 0.600. So 0.6 millimeters of drift from our fence that we just made. So let's do all our calculations again. Now I'll do that quickly and give you the result. Okay guys, there we go, that is our final result using our fence. So we are 0.0125592 degrees out. That's a little worse than our first one, which was 0.00532. So a little bit worse doing our fence, but still pretty accurate and square. So let's test our piece now corner to corner and see what we get. Right guys, if we could test our piece for corner to corner to see if we are square when everything is said and done. 91.9 millimeters, so 919 mil exactly. And if I measure from this corner to this corner, I am 91.9 centimeters, 919 cent millimeters, bang on. So I'm bang on according to this tape measure, and if I'm good according to the tape measure, I'm good for any job that I'm doing. So we can call that almost perfectly square. According to the measuring tape, corner to corner, this piece is perfectly square. We're off by only, what did we say? 0 0.0125 degrees building our fence. So our fence works, so building a sacrificial fence it took me all of 10 minutes to whip one up. So yeah, happy days. So there's a close up of that, as close as I can get you. So there we go, just under 92 mil, or 92 centimeters, I should say, just under 920 mil. That corner, I'm gonna rotate it around the opposite corner. Hopefully you guys can see this on camera. Have I got that on shot? I do just about. There we go. So again, bang on. To the millimeter, we are bang on. So guys, I would call that a perfectly square. Okay guys, there we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed that one. You can see the MFT table in operation a little bit more. And now we've proved that it is good and accurate. We're only a tiny out, a bit out. It's a tiny discrepancy over the course of four cuts. So that's what we like to see. And building a sacrificial fence is as easy as that with this path guide system. So that's a great little addition. And then to know that we can build accurate fences that we can use as sacrificial fences is absolutely great. Now, the dogs are really bugging me with the, um, the Bosch track system, the fact that the Bosch tracks are overhangs the edge. I even hit that dog when I was trying to do the four cut test through my fence. So I had to cut a little bit deeper into my top to finish out the cut to get the blade to go through it. So cut a little deeper than I would like, but we're gonna be routing in a sacrificial piece there anyway. So I'm definitely gonna get the dogs with the T-slots in the top to put underneath this track. And um, I think that's gonna be a lot better because bumping into them dogs when you're trying to be accurate is very annoying to say the least. So it's designed to kind of work alongside the festival stuff. Like I say, the festival track is a lot wider and the festival track has a T-track on top that you can put clips around your dogs and things like that. But a little bit of um, alterations and we get it working great with this Bosch track. So, so we are perfectly accurate, which is absolutely great. So hopefully you've enjoyed it again, guys. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. And uh, I have a Patreon set up now, guys. So if you want to support my work and support what I do here, I'll leave a link below. So thanks to the Patreons for signing up. Uh, you were very quick to do so, guys. So to Kim, to Peter, to Doug, to Aaron and Alfred. Appreciate it, guys. I get to speak to everybody now over on Patreon, message people. People can private message me. It kind of works a little bit along like Facebook and that kind of way so I can 
share behind the scenes stuff. I can direct message people. People can get directly in contact with me. So, so it's nice that way I can really talk to the Patreons. But everything is always going to remain free on YouTube, guys. I'm not going to put anything behind paywalls. So if you can't um, support the channel, don't worry about it. Everything will still remain free. But if you can, buy me a cup of coffee. That'd be great. Join up the Patreon. That'd be fantastic. So that's it, guys. I'm going to get out of here now. It's time for some dinner, I think. And uh, I'm happy now with my MFT table. I know it's accurate and I know I can build accurate fences. So until the next one, guys, I shall talk to you then.